Mario was walking through the forest, having just recovered a star piece at Star Hill, and had just happened upon a quaint little village on the coast, facing brightly towards the sea. Mario looked around, expecting the hustle and bustle of the Mushroom Kingdom, with people all around having fun and enjoying the beautiful day, but oddly enough, there was no one to be seen. Mario poked around for a while, then he spied an inn. Feeling rather sleepy from his long trek, he decided to take a well-deserved nap. Mario entered the inn and was met by the gaze of a strange woman behind the counter. Mario stood, shocked at first, but regained his composure and approached the woman. In a friendly manner, he asked for a room for a while. The woman stared for a moment, as if thinking of what to say, but slowly slid a key to him across the counter, and in a dull, hoarse voice said, No charge. Mario thanked the woman and walked upstairs, spotting a very inviting bed. With a grin on his face, he jumped into bed, turned out the light, and was out. A few hours later, Mario, who had rolled onto his back beneath the covers while he slept, awoke slowly, barely opening his eyes. As he did, he noticed what looked to be the woman from before, standing on a bookshelf, watching Mario as he slept. Mario quickly opened his eyes, but the woman was gone. Maybe she hadn't been there at all, and Mario's eyes were just playing tricks on him. As Mario got up, he stretched, now full of energy. He ran downstairs and saw the woman, standing behind the counter, in the exact same spot she had been upon his arrival. Mario approached the woman again and thanked her for the room. Mario approached the woman again and thanked her for the room, but he had to be going. As Mario placed his room key on the table, the woman quickly grabbed his wrist. Someone like yourself, an adventurer, you should go see the Elder. He is the most respected person in town. He could help you. Mario stood puzzled at what the woman had said, as he had never met her before today, and had never mentioned an adventurer. Mario nodded quietly, and the woman released her grip on his arm, and he left the inn. Having only slept for a few hours, the sun still hung high in the sky, so Mario decided to explore the town some more, and write off what had happened at the inn as a one-time thing. Mario approached the store with the words, Weapon and Armor Shop, written on a sign outside it. It's always a good idea to upgrade your gear, Mario thought, and strode right in. As he passed the threshold, he noticed two people standing at different counters and approached the weapon salesman. Mario greeted the man, who merely looked up at him and said, If you're planning on going to the sea, you'd better watch out. That Jonathan Jones can be one mean guy. Mario looked at the man. As he was about to speak, the man rushed to the other man at the adjoining counter, whispering something to him, then hurrying back. Mario was about to ask about buying weapons when the man suddenly shouted, I'm sorry, we have no weapons for sale. If you want armor, you'll have to talk to the man over there. Mario shrugged and approached the second man. As he was about to inquire about buying some armor, the second man also shouted, I'm sorry, we have no armor for sale. If you want weapons, you'll have to talk to the man over there. Mario was very perplexed. He thanked the men for their time and quickly left the store. Mario was scratching his head over what had happened, and then he looked up, and on a nearby hill, noticed a very large house. That must be the Elder's house, Mario thought. He slowly approached the house and knocked. A sharp voice was heard from inside. Come in already! Mario jumped and rushed in. Inside, seated at a table, was an old man looking very angry. It's about time you got here! The man shouted, I am the elder of Seaside Town, and I need you to do something for me. Mario approached and was about to sit down when the man shouted, Don't sit! There's no time for that. I need you to go and get me the star piece that fell into the ocean. I know you're collecting them, so you'll have no problem, right? Mario, hovering over the chair, was very confused. How did everyone know he was looking for star pieces? Mario knew the man wouldn't take no for an answer, so he agreed. Before he left, he noticed a staircase leading upstairs, so he excused himself and went upstairs to find a frog sitting and reading a book. Hello, the frog said happily. I'll bet I know who you are. You're Mario, aren't you? Mario nodded. I knew it, the frog said. I knew I recognized you. Don't you remember me? I helped you back in Tadpole Pond. Mario smiled and realized he'd met the frog previously in his adventure. They conversed for a while when Mario asked about the star piece. Oh, that, said the frog. Well, I heard from Frog Fuchsius that you were collecting them. But from your story, everyone in town knows about it. I have no idea how. Well, to be honest, I'm sorry, but I hate to crash like this, but I really had to take a break. I've been studying like crazy, and I need some sleep. Feel free to stick around, but I heard the elders yelling from here, so you might want to get going sooner than later. With that, the frog turned around, leapt into bed, and was out like a light. 
Mario looked around the room and noticed the book the frog was reading had a page caught, in, and so Mario opened the book to fix it before it became bent too badly. As he fixed the page, he started to read. It was the frog's diary, and from what Mario could tell, it was very odd. There were times listed in the book, meaning the frog had been up for days writing. Mario looked at the frog and figured he probably wouldn't mind if he read it, as long as the frog didn't wake up and catch him. Mario turned the first page and began to read. Day 1. Sunny. 2.30 p.m. Just moved in. These people are so nice to me. The elder was cool enough to let me live in his spare bedroom. I just know the fresh air will help me get some studying done. Sorry to cut this short, diary, but there's a party and I don't want to be late. Mario smiled as the frog had obviously been accepted by the people, so he kept reading, flipping ahead a few pages. Day 7. Partly cloudy. 11.45 p.m. Heard banging on the elder's door. Who's coming in this late? Waited a while, but didn't hear any voices. The elder must have still been asleep. More banging on the door. This time, footsteps downstairs. I guess the elder was up after all. Waited a bit longer. Heard arguing. Lots more footsteps. Then the door slammed. I went down to check, but no one was around. The elder must have gone off somewhere. Oh well. Back to sleep. The elder knows what he's doing. Day 8. Cloudy. 8.22 a.m. The elder woke me up early this morning. He was in my room yelling at me. I could barely understand him. I guess whatever happened last night really set him off. I'm going to try to avoid the elder today. He seems different somehow. Day 9. Sunny. 12.45 p.m. Went to the accessory shop today. I really like that gal who works there, but for some reason she wasn't there. There was someone I'd never seen in town before working there. What was weirder was she was sitting on the table behind the counter just staring at me as I looked at the store's merchandise. I decided to leave and not buy anything. That woman really creeped me out. I'm not one to bash someone for anything frivolous, but that woman was dressed very odd, and she was very pale. Did she live in a cave before moving here? Day 10. Sunny. 5.15 p.m. Another weird encounter. This time it was the woman who ran the inn who had vanished. I went to return a book I'd borrowed, and there sat another pale woman, dressed in black and red. She told me if I wanted to sleep, it would cost five coins. I asked where the other woman was, but all she said was, it would cost five coins to sleep there. I tried to tell her that I didn't want to sleep. I just wanted to know where the innkeeper was so I could return the book, but she just stared at me. After a long pause, she slid me a key and said, no charge. I ran out of there. It was really weird. Day 11. Cloudy. 3.12 p.m. Went to visit the heavy mushroom salesman as I do every week. But guess what? He too was gone, with another stranger in his place. I tried to ask where the regular guy was, but the man didn't even look at me. He just stared at the wall, watching the shop's mushroom logo spin as they always did. I tried to buy some mushrooms, but all the man would say was, they just keep spinning. They just keep spinning round and round. What is going on? Where is everybody? Day 12. Cloudy. 11.59 p.m. I didn't leave my room today. I don't know if I will again for a while. I heard the elder arguing with someone again. He was so angry. I couldn't really make out what he was saying, but it's like he was speaking in a different voice. He kept yelling, Star piece! Star piece! That's all I could make out. As I was trying to read, I dropped my book when he slammed the door again, and there was a loud thump when my book hit the floor. The elder must have heard it because he ran up the stairs and came into my room screaming at me. He wanted to know what I had heard, so I lied and said I was focused on reading and I didn't hear anything. He must have bought it because he slammed my door and went back downstairs. I really wish my door had a lock. Day 13. Cloudy. 2.27 a.m. I was awoken by more yelling. This time it was outside. I looked out my window to see the elder screaming at a whole bunch of people. They were all standing in a straight line, but he was pacing back and forth in front of them. I couldn't make out what they were saying, but I recognized the woman from the inn and the guy from the mushroom shop in the line. As I watched the man from the mushroom shop turned his head slowly around and looked up at me, I was so scared I fell over. How could he see me from that far away? Why would he even look back? I'm really scared. I don't think I'll be sleeping tonight. Decided to move my bookcase in front of the door. Day 13, continued, 7.13 a.m. I guess I passed out because I woke with a start to see my door was wide open and the bookcase had been knocked over. I turned towards the door and I could just make out the side of someone's face and an eye peering at me from beyond the door. I jumped with fright and when I looked back at the door, the face was gone. Did I imagine it? Am I going crazy? What's happening to me? Why are people watching me? I decided to speak with the elder about this. Not my best idea but I just have to know. 
Mario looked at the next page and noticed the page was missing. From day 13, it jumped to day 16. Mario looked back at the frog, who was sleeping peacefully, and read on. Day 16. Sunny. 12.30 p.m. I don't remember much from the past few days. I don't even remember talking with the elder. Just this sharp pain in my side. I've got a huge bruise running along my ribs, and it really stings. The bruise is in a weird shape, too. The elder actually made me breakfast this morning. He asked how I was feeling, and I told him about the bruise. He seemed concerned and told me I'd gone off and hurt myself a few days before. Apparently, I'd been jumping around, and for some reason, I decided it would be a good idea to try to climb one of the trees. I'd gotten about halfway up and fallen off when a coconut fell off and hit me. I landed on my side, hence my ribs hurting. Nonsense. Nothing in the world could get me up a tree. I'm afraid of heights. And I know foot-shaped bruises when I see them. Day 17. That's it. Something's going on, and I'm going to find out what. I stayed up to see what these people were up to, and sure enough, they went out again last night. It was really late, and they were all gathered around the shoreline. The elder was yelling. Of course he was. He never stops yelling. Everyone was just standing there, not moving an inch, when I saw someone come crawling out of the sea. I couldn't tell who it was, but when he reached the group, they all started back towards the house. I quickly leapt into bed and pretended to be asleep as the door downstairs opened and everyone walked in. I heard the elder come up and check on me. I heard his footsteps stop right beside my bed. Please don't think I'm awake. He stood there for what seemed like forever. Did he know? I couldn't move. I couldn't even breathe. Eventually, he walked away and headed back downstairs. He yelled at everyone to leave and went back to his room. And there was silence for the rest of the night. Day 18. I woke up this morning without a blanket on my bed. I found it outside as if it had been thrown out. As I went back, the elder saw me. I tried to hurry upstairs, but he grabbed me. He told me I needed to go on an errand for him today, so I obliged him. He asked me to go to Marymore and pick up some mid-mushrooms. Apparently the store had run out and the owner wasn't feeling well. I quickly left the house and hurried out of town. Who was he kidding? The mushroom shop doesn't even sell mid-mushrooms. They're just trying to get rid of me for a while. I know it. Needless to say, I went to Marymore and bought as many mushrooms as I could carry. I didn't want to return empty-handed. As I was in the shop, I noticed a large man who could help me. I was about to ask him to come back and help me out of town, but at the corner of my eye, I saw him. The man from the mushroom shop, watching me from a window. That settles it. They were just trying to get rid of me. But for what? Day 25? I haven't slept for days. I just sit in bed, staring at my door, never moving an inch. Nothing's happened in a while. They must know I'm on to them. I keep hearing slight rustling noises outside my windows, but I just tell myself it's the trees and leave it at that. There are no trees near the house. Who am I kidding? They're watching me, waiting for me to slip up. One mistake, and it's over for me. I haven't heard the Elder in days. Do they know? Do they know? Do they? Day 28. I finally found my diary. I woke up a few days ago and found it was missing, but I finally found it in the elder's bedroom. Several pages had been torn out and I found the remains burned outside. Why did he let me find it? Are they just playing with my head? Why? I keep hearing things everywhere I go. Everyone is watching me. Never alone. Never alone. I don't know what day it is and I still haven't slept. How long has it been? Are they just toying with me? Letting me crack before they kill me? Why are they doing this? What's happening? Let me go! Please! I can't take it anymore! Day 32. Counting the days back to the last number, I figured I've been here for over a month now. I know I haven't written in a while, but it's all I have now. I have to keep stashing the book back in the Elder's room while he's away. I hope he doesn't read it. That would be the end. I just know it. But I can't stop writing. Maybe someone will find this, and they won't make the same mistake I did. I am a slave to them now. I cannot go anywhere without eyes watching me. I cannot speak without ears listening. I cannot breathe when I'm around them. Those things. Whatever they are. They are not people. Mario noticed the remaining pages were blank, but tucked in the back of the book there were several ripped pages between the back cover and last page. The frog had been writing on the small pages instead of the book. Mario pulled the small pieces of paper out and continued to read. They moved the book again. They know I know about them. I saw them. I saw them by the water. They changed. They turned into that thing. They went out into the water. Couldn't stop looking. Had to see. Had to see that thing come back out. Eventually it did. It just stood there on the shore looking up at the house. I knew it could see me. I know! I wanted it to! I'm not afraid anymore. I want it to see! 
The large body is splitting up now. They are coming for me. I will hide this under my pillow. They'll never look for it there. Back to sleep. For now. I awoke again, splitting pain in my head. I looked up and saw all of them, standing all around me, never moving, never blinking, never breathing. I do not know what they are, but they have me. I am a prisoner. Am I even writing this anymore? Is my mind just emptying onto these tiny slips of paper? Am I going insane? No, I know I'm not. You can't be insane if you know you're not, right? The elder eventually came up. He looked a little tired, and he had cuts on his face, like he had been fighting someone. He stared at me. I knew he was going to kill me. I wanted him to. I wanted him to set me free. That is what I want. But he didn't. He asked me how I was feeling, and as I looked up, everyone was smiling at me. Did I crack, or was it all in my head? The nightmare is over. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was not wrong. They are going to kill me. I heard them talking this morning. They know I can hear them. They want me to hear them, so I know it's coming. Makes the game more fun that way, doesn't it? Wait, they're leaving. Why are they leaving? I looked out my window to watch them leave. As I did, I saw two of them quickly hide as someone was coming up the road. A man. A man in a red hat. Who could this man be? Why would he want to come here? To my personal hell. This is my nightmare. He will know it soon enough. I can hear him knocking on the door. The elder seems to be expecting him. I can hear them talking. What's a star piece? Is that why they keep going to the sea? Is that where it is? I can hear the man coming upstairs. Maybe he could help me. I can only pray he doesn't check to see that I'm still awake and that he reads my diary. <laughs>